Hey guys, thank you so much for being here. Today I'm gonna be doing just an old fashioned type haul video. I got some things from Sephora and you might be completely sick of watching these Sephora haul videos because they're everywhere and I don't blame you if you are, but I've watched quite a few of them now and I don't think I got a lot of the same things that other people are getting. There's a lot of like Sephora collection in here and also like some skincare and stuff. So I just felt like it might be worth it to show you guys all of that stuff. I also got some new palettes from Odin's Eye, the holiday palettes that are coming out this Sunday. I'm not sure if this video is going to go up Saturday or Sunday, but either way, these are so beautiful. So I really wanted to show you those. And I got these new Superstay Teddy Tints from Maybelline. Oh my gosh, they're amazing. So why don't we just start with these, I guess, and then we'll head into the Odin's Eye palettes and then everything that I got from Sephora. So these are available at Ulta right now. They're also over on TikTok shop. I saw them there as well. And I don't believe they're gonna be in stores until December. So they're online only right now, but they come in 10 shades. I ended up choosing five of them. I got kind of the more like neutrally wearable colors, but they have some really bright, bold colors as well. And these claim to give your lips a tint that's plush, blurred, matte color that lasts up to 12 hours. It's transfer proof, smudge proof, kiss proof and waterproof and it can give you a sheer and blurred look or you can build it up for a bolder look you can even use these on your cheeks which I did today as well and again I did get five out of the ten shades but now that I've tried this formula I honestly think that I want them all they remind me so much of the Korean lip tints that have that moussey blurry texture really similar to the Fui blurry pudding pots if you've tried these I know I've talked about these on my channel so many times these are amazing and I use them on both lips and cheeks all the time. I feel like they're just the simplest thing to use. And even though they're matte, they're not drying. And that's how I feel about the Teddy Tints. And I like these even more because they come with a wand. I don't have to like dig my finger into a pot. So today I'm wearing the shade 55 Knee High. And again, I am wearing it on my lips. I also put some on my cheeks because they have that moussey formula. You can really just like dot a little bit on your skin and blend and it sets down to that powdery finish. But again, somehow they're not drying. And I love that the blurry texture just smooths out all of your lip lines. And when they say that they're budge proof, they truly are. If I go ahead and kiss my hand, there's nothing like no residue at all comes off. And if you're really worried about dryness, you can always pop a lip balm on top, just something clear to give your lips a little bit more hydration. But I find that I don't even need it. Maybe in the dead of winter, I might. But for now, they just feel so comfortable on my lips. So let me just show you guys the shades that I got. I just wanted to do a quick try on so that you can see what they look like on my lips. And again, what I love about these is you can wear them very sheer if you want to, which is what I did here or you can layer these up and just really build up the color and make them a little bit more bold. They're just absolutely fantastic. And I say this as someone who does not like matte lipsticks. I generally avoid them like the plague. Usually they make my lips look very dry and wrinkled and cracked and just are not pleasant to wear, but these are truly like the Korean formulas that I've tried that are much kinder to drier lips like I have. So I honestly can't recommend these enough and I'm so excited to see something like this come to the drugstore. Um, just quickly, I can't remember if they have a scent or not. I don't think they do. Actually, yeah, they do have like the slightest smell. It's maybe, it's maybe slightly fruity. You know what it reminds me of? One of those Sharpie markers, like remember the scented Sharpies? It smells like the cherry one, which was my favorite, like the red one. And I might be totally turning you off right now with that description, but it is honestly so faint. I didn't even think that these had a scent. The only way I can smell them is really to put my nose right up to it. So once it's on your lips, I don't think you're gonna smell anything. So anyway, I just wanted to share those with you guys because like I said, they're just amazing. Next, we have new Odin's Eye Palettes. Again, these are launching Sunday, November 10th, and I do have a coupon code with Odin's Eye. I'll put it here on the screen and down in the description box below. So these are part of their holiday collection. They usually come out with holiday palettes every year. 
and they're just beautiful. I happen to be a really big indie eyeshadow fan. I love Odin's Eyes formula in particular. And I'm actually wearing one of these palettes in the video today in case you were wondering what's on my eyes. So let me just quickly show you some close-ups of the palettes and some swatches. So first up we have Silvery Bliss. And this isn't actually too silvery, so the name is a little bit misleading, but I do think it definitely has like those Christmassy colors in here. You have the reds, you have one matte green shade, there's a silver shimmer, there's golden copper, there's also some purple in here. So it's kind of a mixed bag, and I think that a lot of Odin's Eye palettes are like that. But there are some really beautiful special shades in here that are just gonna pop so much on your eye. And even if you look at this color story and feel like a little bit confused because it doesn't look super cohesive. One thing that I love to do with Odin's Eyes palettes is to really look at these as a lot of one and done shadows or maybe not one and done but like one and a crease color. So just as an example today on my lids I'm wearing the shade Silvery Bliss which is this really gorgeous almost like pinky champagne color. It's stunning. And because it has that little bit of pink behind it, I knew I was gonna wear that shade. So then I just chose a crease color that had a little bit of pink in it. So I picked this one up here. So this pink is in my crease and then I put Silvery Bliss on my lid. And because these are kind of warmer pinks, I also picked up the shade Cocoa Milk, which is this uh, kind of mid-tone brown. And I put that in the outer corner just to deepen things up a little bit. But I would say if you're using any of like the cooler tone shimmer shades on your lid, then just grab a cool tone crease color. There's this one here, this beautiful kind of mauve purple. You could also use the pink with the purple or silver in the palette. If you're going for the gold or copper in the palette, you can always put this warm brown in your crease or use some of the other warm shades. And another thing that Odin's Eye does with their palettes to make it kind of fun and interesting is they alternate matte and shimmer shades the whole way in the palette. So you have a 50-50 split of matte and shimmer. And by doing so, you can take four shades in any direction and make a quad out of it. So you can make these four down here a quad if you want to, or you can make these four in the middle a quad or these four on top. It doesn't matter. Any way you look at it, you have two shimmers, two mattes. And sometimes it might not look like they go together, but you can really create some fun and interesting looks if you use the palette that way. So that's just one little tip that I've found from using these palettes over the years. Um, the next palette that they have, if you don't like this one, if it's like a little bit too deep and smoky, they have one that's a little bit lighter and more pastel. This one's called Rosy Jingle. So Rosy Jingle, Again, definitely has some color to it, but they also give you those neutral shades or those more subtle shades. So you can do a lot with this palette. It's very, very versatile overall. Again, so many of these shimmer shades would make incredible one and done shadows. And like I said before, I tend to reach into my Odin's Eye collection for one and done shadows all the time. I just love the softer tones in here. And this is a palette that's a little more unique to my collection. I don't really have anything that looks like this. So I just wanted to show these to you guys really quick. If you would like a discount, I do have a coupon code with Odin's Eye. So I'll leave that down below, but this is not sponsored. They did send them to me in PR, but I've been a fan of their palettes for many years and bought most of what I have with my own money. They just started sending me PR very recently. So anyway, let's move on to what I got from Sephora. I got quite a bit, like I said, um, but a lot of it is Sephora collection. So I guess we'll just start with the makeup first and we'll end with the skincare. That way, if you guys don't care about skincare, you can just click off the video at that point. So when it comes to palettes, I did get two of them. The first one, one is from Sephora collection and you guys talked me into this. I saw so many comments from you saying that Sephora Collection has new palettes. And at first, I'll be honest, I was kind of skeptical because I haven't really tried many Sephora Collection eyeshadow palettes that I liked. I always felt like their formula was like very mediocre, not worth spending the money on. And these are a little bit more expensive. So I was kind of like, mm, I don't know. But then one of you had commented, which really sealed the deal for me, and said that these new palettes are like their Pro palettes that they used to have. And some of you may remember those, some of you may not, but their Pro palettes were incredible. I was blown away by them. They were a little more on the expensive side, 
but I want to say those were out maybe back in like the 2016, 2017 timeframe. And it seemed like they were trying to compete with like Anastasia back then and all of the big brands that were really like killing it when it came to palettes. And so, so that kind of sealed the deal. Then I saw someone else say that these reminded them of Natasha Denona and it made me really, really curious. So uh, there are two versions of this. I ended up getting, which one is this? This is called Soft Light and these are called the amazing palette by the way so they're incredibly heavy first of all and they have a huge mirror that actually like stands on its own so if you set the palette down the mirror will stand up it doesn't flop back which is awesome and the mirror actually pops out of here too if you want to take it out and just like hold it or prop it up on something you can do that too so that's really nice and i mean this has a ton of shades so i'll just show you a quick close-up of it and of course some swatches I have to say when I swatched it, I was pretty impressed. I felt like the mattes are incredibly pigmented. Not what I've seen from Sephora collection in recent years. I think these feel so much nicer. And the shimmer shades, there's a lot of different variety in here. There's some glitter. There's some that are more metallic. Some of them even almost feel like a baked formula, like the Patrick Ta eyeshadows. So there's a lot of variety in here when it comes to the shimmers. And I actually have a pretty good feeling about this palette. I think it's gonna be good. So if you guys would like to see me use this in a video, let me know. I feel like I should just do a full face of Sephora collection at some point. I think that would be really fun because their products are very like hit or miss. So it's nice to know like what's actually worth buying. The second palette that I got is this little moon dust quad from Urban Decay. So this has four moon dust shadows. It's actually a really good price because this palette is $39 for four shadows and the moon dust shadows are typically $24 each. Now the shadows that are in here are a little bit smaller than the singles. The singles have 1.8 grams of product. This has 1.5 each. So they're actually pretty close. And if you bought four of these moon dust shadow singles, it would be $96. So for 39, I do feel like you're getting a really good price here. Um, the one thing that disappointed me about this palette though, is that it's called the Space Cowboy eyeshadow palette and Space Cowboy isn't even in here. Like I said, I do have the single of that, but for anyone who is hoping to get the famous Space Cowboy shade in this palette, it's not here. What they're giving you is Space Cowboy Rides Again. You're also getting A-List Energy, Lunar Lit, and Sparkle Hour. So I'll just quickly show you swatches of these. And if you've never tried the Moon Dust shadows, they have a little bit of a drier feel. They almost feel like a baked shadow and they have a lot of micro glitter, which gives them that wet look on your eyes that's so popular right now. And I think out of the four shades in this palette, three of them definitely have that vibe. The fourth one, Lunar Lit, which is the brown shade, it's almost more of a satiny finish. So I think you could definitely use this shade as a crease color maybe if you wanted to do something other than one and done type of looks, you could put this in your crease first and then put one of the other three shades on as a topper. Or if you just want something that's not super glittery that day, this would also make a great one and done shadow. It's a pretty chocolatey brown. So overall, I think if you've been wanting to try the Moon Dust shadows, this is a great way to do it. It's such a good price. It's way cheaper than buying four shades on their own. And if you find that you really like the formula, you can always go out and buy a single here or there depending on the shade that you want. I also ended up getting some lipsticks from Sephora Collection. So first I got two shades of their About That Shine Lacquer Lipsticks. These are $16 each. They're supposed to have that really melty kind of buttery texture, similar to the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips. They're supposed to give a lot of shine, a lot of hydration, and be kind of like a hybrid between a full pigment lipstick and a lip balm. So you're gonna get tons of color, but at the same time, like the feel of a balm. So these look like they're gonna be amazing. I haven't tried these on yet, but I will insert clips that I'm going to film after this video of me just trying them on so that you can at least see what the colors look like on. Just from swatching them alone, they feel like they're going to be super comfortable. And as far as the scent goes, they don't really seem to have any type of strong scent. Whatever it is, I can barely smell it. It almost reminds me of the smell of tea a little bit, but it's so faint, I really don't think I'm gonna smell it once it's on my lips. So I did get those, and then I also wanted to try their satin lipstick formula as well. So these are called the Satin Hydrating Lipstick. Again, I got two colors to try, and these are also $16, and when I swatched them before, they had a good amount of shine. They're not quite as glossy as the previous ones that I just showed, but they still look like they're gonna be super comfortable. 
They also seem like they're very pigmented and they have, I think, a similar look and feel to like the Anastasia satin lipsticks or the Hourglass ones. So they may be trying to kind of offer a lower cost dupe to something like that. And as far as scent with these, again, I'm not really smelling much. I'm almost kind of getting like that tea sort of vibe and I think I smell vanilla, but that could be my hand cream too. So don't hold me to that. Whatever it is, it barely smells like anything. It's not gonna be overpowering at all. I also saw this purple blush from Sephora collection. And since I've been so into purple blushes lately, I thought I would try this out. It's the shade Trust Yourself. And this is one of the matte finish ones. So they have some that are shimmery, some that are matte. And I was actually a big fan of their previous single blushes. I thought they were really good. These are the reformulated ones. And when I read the reviews, they're very mixed. Some people say they're super patchy, other people love them. So it was really hard to tell. And when I swatched this color in particular, I have to say I was a little bit disappointed in the color. It's super, super pale. It's like a pale lilac color, but it seems to have a lot of like white pigment behind the formula. And I really don't know how this is gonna show up on its own. Like if I put this on my hand, it barely shows up and it also almost seems to look like bright. Like again, there's that white pigment behind it. It adds like a little bit of uh, almost like chalkiness, which is pretty hard to do on skin that's as pale as mine. So I really don't know how I feel about this. I think I was expecting something just a little bit different, but I'll have to just keep playing with this and let you guys know. Another thing that I got from Sephora collection while the 30% is going on is their Pro Blush Brush. So this is number 96, and the shape of it looked very similar to um, the Flower Beauty Blush Brush, which is my favorite, and I misplaced that one. I have no idea where it is, but I just loved the shape of it. It was a little more flat. It kind of splays out at the sides here, and then, rounds off at the top. So it's not one of those big bulbous round blush brushes. And I just found that the Flower Beauty one, like it just fits so nicely right here on my face. It doesn't feel quite as soft as the Flower one. And it also is a little bit more dense now that I'm feeling it, which is disappointing because this was way more expensive than the Flower Beauty. It's just that they don't make the Flower Beauty one anymore. So I'm not able to get it. This one to me feels a little bit cheap and I haven't tried a Sephora brush in a long time, but back when I worked there between 2004, 2006, seven the brushes were incredible. Like they were such high quality. They were like professional brushes. But now that I've tried brands like BK Beauty and Sigma and Refer, this to me, it just doesn't feel like it's worth the price at all. Like if I compare it to the Sigma Soft Sculpt brush that I've been using, this feels like velvet. It is so incredible the way that it feels. This just feels cheap. So I'm actually kind of disappointed with this as well. Moving on to some skincare. I did get a couple of body products from Sephora Collections. The first thing I got is their resurfacing body lotion. So this has nine and a half percent AHA and PHA plus hyaluronic acid. And I think it actually does a really good job at exfoliating my skin. I put this on my legs like right when I first got it. And not only did it feel really hydrating, but my legs felt smoother almost instantly. And then by the next day, I noticed a pretty big improvement. And it also has a nice scent. It's kind of hard to describe. It's a little bit warm. It's also a little bit floral. It actually smells really good. And as a bonus, it doesn't have that funky smell that a lot of exfoliating body lotions have. If you've ever tried Amlactin or brands like that, they always kind of smell weird. This one doesn't. So I really like that about it. I also got their Shea Butter All Day Hydrator. This is like a huge tub of body butter. It was a good price. And I remember loving the Sephora collection, Super Surprise cream body butter. If you've ever tried that one, it's been discontinued for a while now. But again, that was something that I used back when I worked there all the way up until not that long ago when they got rid of it. So I don't know if this is supposed to be replacing it or not, but it does feel really super hydrating. It has a super thick, really rich texture. But the one thing that I liked about this when I first tried it is I felt like it sinks into your skin pretty quickly. So it doesn't leave you feeling like a grease ball, but it still gives your skin like a ton of hydration. And also, the smell of this is so nostalgic. It reminds me of this perfume that I had as a kid and I'm trying to remember what it was. If it was like Polly Pocket or maybe it was Holly Hobby, like there was something or Tinkerbell. I don't know. I had this like kid's perfume when I was little and this just 
instantly took me back to that. It's a floral smell, but it's kind of like a youthful floral. It has a little bit of like warmth behind it. So it's not like a heavy musky type of scent. It's lighter and fresher. It just smells really, really good. I also ended up getting two products from the Korean brand, Then I Met You. So this brand is owned by Charlotte Cho. She's the founder of Soko Glam. So if you've ever shopped that website, they're a huge K-beauty site that's based in New York. And she went and created her own brand, which I think is so cool. So I ended up getting the Honeydew Lip Mask and the Renewing Rich Beauty Cream. So the Honeydew Lip Mask is actually an exfoliating formula at the same time. So it has honeydew and it has lactic acid. So you can wear this at night to just exfoliate your lips. You wake up in the morning and all of the flakes are gone, or you can just wear it throughout the day as well. It both hydrates and exfoliates at the same time, which I think is really nice because I have so many lip balms, but I'm not good about exfoliating them. I have tons of lip scrubs, but they're just messy and they're an extra step. So I usually ignore them most of the time. I like the idea of just putting on a lip balm and then it exfoliates your lips for you. So this is really nice. I think it has kind of like a little bit of a honeydew scent. It's really fresh. It's super subtle. So it's nothing that's gonna like overpower you. And I love the feel of this. It's thin enough that you can wear it during the day. It's not like one of those heavy, rich lip masks. It has a really silky feel to it, but at the same time, it's really hydrating. So I'm excited to keep playing with this. And the other thing that I got from them is the Renewing Rich Beauty Cream. So this is supposed to have the Quad Ginseng Complex, which is supposed to moisturize, promote elastic, elasticity and smooth the look of fine lines. It also has ceramides for your skin's barrier and squalane to leave your skin feeling soft and supple. And I haven't tried this yet, but I'm just putting a little bit on my hand and it has that really rich feel, almost like the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream, which you guys know is my favorite. Um, look at how dewy it made my skin look just now. It seems like it's gonna be so hydrating for the winter time. It does have a little bit of a spicy scent. I guess it's probably that ginseng in there, but this feels incredible and it had really great reviews, which is why I ended up purchasing it. So I will let you guys know in a future video what I think, but so far so good. So anyway, guys, that's all I have for today's video. But if you'd like to see some more new drugstore makeup, I'll just put a video right up here where I talk about that. And if you'd like to see some of my favorites at Sephora, if you're still shopping the sale, I'll put one right here. We also have Black Friday coming up and I include some info in that video about Black Friday as well. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you so much and I hope to see you in my next video. I'll see you guys later. Bye guys.